last four games, you guys have had your four lowest scoring games of the season. Um, what's it been like as you guys just try to play your way into rhythm on the fly? Yeah, I mean, it hasn't been good. Uh, it hasn't been good at all. It's I knew I had a, uh, a feeling that this could possibly happen tonight because all the, the, the guys coming back um, and then coming back from a road trip. But we were, we were just out of sync. They're a good team, though. They're a good team. They, they, they get in you. They're, they're athletic. They got high-level shot maker, high-level free throw getter. Uh, yeah, he takes. I mean, he's, a high, he's high level, and and but we we didn't, we didn't play we didn't play well. But it was a little bit of a getting guys in. I'm still very confident in the group. Um, wasn't one of our uh, better starts. I thought that last three minutes of that first quarter. Uh, you know, I thought the game was like I don't know 19, 17 or something. They went on a 13. The whatever five run to close that quarter. And then the, the, the three at the end of the half was hurt you too. We could have been down eight. You know, there's a big difference down eight, 11. You know, it's only three, but it's just a different feel. But we fought back, we fought back, but we can't dig ourselves that big of a hole. And we're gonna, we're gonna, our guys are gonna play better. You guys, um, obviously there's been some tough circumstances but at three and 12, given the expectations going into this season, are, are you guys starting to feel a little bit of pressure to turn this thing around? No, nah, I mean, the pressure, I always tell guys is the, you, you, you should have pressure on you and the pressure is just playing hard. You focus on the, you focus on the pro process of um, playing good basketball, practicing good habits. we got a lot of moving parts and we could be, you know, it's, Fairly, you know, we're going to, it's going to take some time. I don't, we don't want to, and we don't hope, hope that it doesn't take a couple of weeks, but there's a chance that it might. We got a lot, we got three, three guys coming back Sunday more, more than likely. So it's just going to be, um, we got to, we're going to survive. The good thing about it, there's, there's a lot of teams with uh, 11, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 losses. Uh, so we're right in the middle of it. We have to make up a bunch of games. We've got three more back-to-backs they added. So, but I don't mind that. We need games. We need, we need to get rhythm. We need some continuity. And I still believe in the group. We got a good group going into, going into uh, this year. I know what we have, and I still believe in what we have. And we're going to get better. Ava. Scott, you guys spoke so much about uh, mentality after the game. What happened with all of the texts tonight? Did it look like frustration from your end? Yeah, I mean, they, that was uh, some very tough moments. We thought we, we thought we were not fouling and we thought we were getting fouled. And a lot of times when that happens, um, you get frustrated and you got, I mean, one guy takes 17 free throws, he had just about as many as we had at halftime. He had more, but I mean, he's a good player, but you can't, we put our hands on him, we foul him too much. Uh, you get frustrated and we don't get those same opportunities on the other end, but we gotta be better. We gotta control ourselves. And I thought Russell's T, his last one, it should have been a, just a, a, a foul, but I can see the game was getting a little chippy but if you're going to call that, you might as well call them early in the game. With the chippiness, did you sense after talking to your guys that that, that was something contained to this game or was it kind of emotions building after all of the, the toughness you guys have gone through? Well, I, I'm assuming that there's a little bit of that. But I think, you know, like, uh, like I tell our guys, this is, this is, this is basketball there's a lot more tougher things that a lot of people are dealing with. And there's a lot of sad things that a lot of people are dealing with. We get to do something we love to do. And we get to show uh, the people that, that want to watch NBA basketball, they get to see it. And so the pressure of just go out there and play hard and compete for your teammates and, and enjoy it. Uh, but you know, we're not like, like Brad has said, we're not, we're, we're frustrated. We're not, we're not giving up. We're not going to give up. We're not, we're definitely not giving up. We're going to keep fighting 
and we will turn it around. And when we do turn around, it's going to be a great feeling to, to be able to say we turned around a, a very unique, a very, you know, first time and probably well, hopefully it never happens again uh, type of start that we had to deal with. Fred. Scott, what gives you that confidence? Where is that from, from an actual basketball standpoint, what are you seeing that you guys are not doing well right now that you think is fixable that will help you turn it around? Well, we got some of our better players have been out. Let's face, I'm not, I'm not knocking the guys that are, that are, have been playing and they've been playing hard, but there's a reason why I played a decade on, on the bench. I wasn't quite good enough. And I understand that. And we got some really good players that haven't played. They haven't played in three weeks. Uh, and they, they weren't, you know, an injury here, a, a, a thigh bruise. And we got one guy, we had six guys out. Uh, one time, seven guys, well, seven guys out with uh, Thomas Bryant. And that's, it's unusual. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to, I didn't know, I don't have the blueprint. I don't, this is, I don't want to ever learn how to, how to coach this way. I'm not a good COVID coach. Uh, and I'll be the first to admit that I know what we have. And I know what Tommy has brought in here, a lot of good high character players, and we're going to be able to fight through this. It's, um, it's tough right now. There's no question, but we still got a lot of games left and we're going to have some practices and we're going to be able to get into a nice NBA rhythm. We need continuity. Now we hope that uh, we don't get hit with any, any more tough situations. We want to just keep playing and building with the good thing. I mean, Russell is better. The last two last two games he has played, he's been able to attack. He's been able to get to the free throw line. He's been able to make uh, get layups, and that's what he does. And he didn't be able he wasn't able to do that consistently early on. But he's going to be able to do that because he's getting uh, healthy. His finger, his his quad, DB is trust me. You guys know it as well as I know it. He's not an 0 for seven shooter. He's going to get better. Rui is a consistent 15. Uh, seven, eight guy, and he's going to get better. And, you know, Mo, we got Denny. Denny's a tough, a tough sucker that he's going to get better. He just turned 20, but he gives you a strong presence defensively, big. He can make a shot. So he can ish is ish is a game changer. He, he can change the game. And I like that. And, and, and Mo, he gets under your skin. He's kind of like the Bill Ambeer of the, this generation. He just bothers teams and he makes shots. He knows how to play. So, those are all the guys that we don't have, but we are having, you know, next game, we're going to have them all back, hopefully. And then Troy, Troy hasn't had a, a, a good start, but he's still a good player and he's going to get opportunities. And that's why I'm confident. I'm a confident because I think we have a pretty good team that has had to deal with a lot of stuff that a lot of teams don't have. And, but they're not giving up. They're not complaining about it. They're going to keep working. Matt Paris. Scott, kind of following up on that, do you like to see that chippiness then from, from your guys in that situation? Yeah, I do. I think we, we need it. We need it. We need, to keep, we need to keep playing with an edge. I thought we could have played with it earlier, but, you know, we didn't. Uh, but another thing, you know, Brad, you can, you, now you know. I mean, we all know. Everybody knows. Unfortunately, last year, the teams, the other coaches in the East didn't know it. Brad is a superstar. When, you know, he, he, he's had a monster month. And he has a bad game and he still has 26. That tells you right there, that guy is a big time player. And even like he told me after the game, you know, he felt bad. And I said, Brad, you have, you've carried us. Um, we didn't play well tonight. You didn't have one of your better games, but you still had 26 and he will bounce back. Trust me, he's gonna bounce back. We're all, we all were, like I said, DB is not going to miss uh, seven shots. He's just not going to do that. That guy is, I've seen a lot of sh great shooters in my time and he's right there on the, on one hand of all the great ones. Yeah, just to clarify, what, what did Brad feel bad about? Was it the shooting or? Well, no, he, he, you know, he, he, he didn't, he didn't play one of his better games and we didn't, we didn't play well. And, you know, that's what leaders do. They feel like the, you know, they, they, they don't play well. They, they let, they feel like they let their, their teammates down, but, he deserves, I mean, not deserves, he's going to have a bad game. And you know what? He's going to have some more. Uh, but I, like I said, he's a, he's a star, man. He has 26 and he, and it wasn't one of his better games. But he'll bounce back and we'll bounce back. And like I said, uh, we're not happy, disappointed. Myself, I can get better. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try to figure things out on the fly. Uh, I, 
most coaches and myself usually included that you want some practice signs, but we need some game time. We need to get, we need to get them to, we need to get on the court and get some continuity. And we're going to have that in the month of February with 15 games in 28 days. Wish Neil. it was a leap year. Sorry, coach. Neil. Scott, when defenses are throwing all kinds of things at Brad, whether it's facing him up, trapping him, doubling him, what are some of the things that you can do to make things easier for him? Well, you, you, it's unfortunately we, I mean, Rui's not going to go three for nine. Uh, Jerome's not going to go one for seven. DB's not going to go 0 for seven. I mean, those guys, we got to hit shots. I mean, you got to, you got, you're going to have physicality on the ball. You're going to have an extra two, uh, extra pair of hands helping, and then you're going to have a weak side clog in the paint. So that's what Brad sees until we can start making some shots and we will. And, and but we have to we have to do it. We haven't made shots in the in the last you know three or four four games, um, but we made a lot of shots earlier in the season. I thought defensively, take away the, fir the first three, the last three minutes of that third quarter. I mean that first quarter, I thought we were pretty solid defensively. And then Trey got hot and hit you know thirty five foot bombs, and those are those are hard to stop because the hand was in his face. Uh, but that's that's how good he is. Last question from Ben. Hi, Coach. You appear confident that the team's going to turn it around, but how do you kind of keep that morale up in the locker room as the losses continue to pile up? Um, that's what we all that's what we all are here to do. I'm paid to coach the team every day. Our players are paid to play every day, and 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 trust me, like I said, there's a lot of things that teams or people are going through. I have friends that are going through some tough things, and. Everybody, we're we're no different than the than the world. We all have people that are going through some tough things. This is not tough. Being three, being three and 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 twelve blank sucks, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna grow from it and we're gonna build from it and we're gonna. I'm feel confident. I'm still. I know you can. I'm not happy. I'm not. I'm not pie in the sky. I'm not pumping sunshine up my. Uh, through my veins, but I'm, I believe that we have enough talent that we get, we get healthy and we will, and we're going to get all of our guys back and we get some games under our belts and we're going to get in a better rhythm and we're going to enjoy DB making a bunch of shots and Russell attacking the rim with his dunks and Brad making plays for his teammates and Rui being consistent and our bigs are going to keep rolling and setting great screens and that's why I'm confident. Brad, you spoke about your frustration after last game with all of the text that we saw tonight. Did you get the sense that that was contained to this game or it was building emotion that that kind of the team had been dealing with? Uh, first person I learned to Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, no, I feel like all that energy was for tonight. Um, it was a lot of, a lot of BS going on out there just in terms of our calls and Text. It was just too many texts on both sides. So it was uh, it was all about tonight. It was frustration on everybody's everybody's side. And for you personally, especially in the first half, you've spoken about your slow starts. What wasn't going right early on tonight, especially? I'm human. Uh, I just didn't have it going. I uh, didn't have too many legs in front of me. So I felt better in the second half. Got them up under me, but uh, I'm human. I had a, I had a horrible night. I, crap tonight so I'm taking on a chain I gotta I gotta be better I told the guys I gave them nothing tonight so I gotta be a lot better Fred hey Brad uh you've talked kind of on and off this year about occasional spacing problems you guys have had on offense with the middle of the floor gets cramped just like what, what's the fix for that, or at least how do you help that along so it's not as obvious when it's happening? Uh, running the floor better. Uh, I think guys understanding their positions, understanding, uh, you know, when we get out in, in transition or after made baskets, you know, we're we're getting out to attack and we got we to gotta do better, you know, creating driving lanes for Russ and I and for guys to create, uh, you know, off the break and, you uh, and be and be more cognizant of it. I think sometimes it's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes we cut at the wrong times, 
So it could just be like just a timing thing and an IQ, IQ type thing, just knowing when and when not to cut, understanding, you know, when to, you know, kind of chase after the ball or, you know, when to, you know, overload one side or not. So it's just, it's just being better at, you know, understanding and just reading the game, you know, knowing where Russ likes to attack, knowing where I like to attack and, you know, just getting a better feel. It sounds like you're kind of getting at it a little bit, but you guys have talked a lot about communication on defense. Is is there, I mean, I know offense is a lot more kind of intuition and, and reading the game and that kind of stuff, but is there a way that communication or at least kind of like just telepathy on the floor can be better? I, I missed your last part, would you say? Yeah. Is there a way that just like communication or at least reading off of your teammates can be better offensively? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting to our spots, uh, cutting harder, setting screens, you know, being decoy sometimes. And it's everybody. It's not, it's not just going to take one guy. Like tonight, Cam Reddish was face guarding me the whole night. And so we got to – sometimes we get stagnant. But okay, what's, what's B doing? What, how can we get B the ball instead of just playing ball? You know, so we just got to be better with that, understand that everybody has a green light to be aggressive and, and attack and, you know, and knock down shots when they have them. So – I think at times, sometimes we get too caught up in, okay, let's try to get beat the ball when it may be difficult at times. So just play basketball. Ace. Brad, obviously I'm sure you're used to, you know, guys coming back from injury, uh, but when it's like a collection of players at once that are all on a different timeline than the rest of the team, what is that like as you guys try to develop cohesion and chemistry? Uh, it, it was a little tough uh, because, you know, you have guys on minutes right away. So you, you understand when I was going to throw them right into the fire. You know, it's a recipe for injury. You know, so we, we do a better cognitive job of just trying to mend guys back into the lineup. Uh, but it, it's going to be tough, you know, because, you know, we've been playing a certain way. And, you know, these guys haven't played in about three weeks, almost four weeks. So it's, it's going to be tough on them. They got to get their win back the legs back under them, you know, get, get a better rhythm and feel for the game. So it's, it's going to be an adjustment for sure. Uh, but we got to do it rapidly on the fly. And as you guys deal with all of that and, you know, so many unusual circumstances this year, and now, now you sit three and 12, just what's kind of the state of the team right now as you guys try to take stock and turn this around? Still pissed off. That's not changing. Uh, you know, I feel like even if we won, we'd still be a little pissed off. You know, so it's... We, we understand that, you know, nobody's going to feel sorry for us. We don't want that, uh, you know, so we got to dig ourselves out of this hole and, and be ready to go come Sunday. You know, it doesn't get any easier. It doesn't get any easier. You know, they added two games to our schedule uh, on our road trip. So we got to we gotta be ready to go and understand it's going to be tough and understand we're going to need everybody collectively in order to get these wins and scrap them together. Kellen. Hey Brad, uh, Coach Brooks was talking about how even you know, despite all like the injuries and the losses, that he's still very confident in this group, in in the team. So I guess I just wanted to get your take, like how how do you, how confident are you in this team still, despite the record and you know, kind of the injuries and all you've been going through. It's always tough, you know. We you see TB go down, we have COVID, eight of our guys are out. Uh, it's very easy to just fall into that trap of saying, "Oh, okay, this is um, this is what we're doing. This is the year we're having." But we we weren't full strength. We didn't have everything. We didn't have a lot of practices to come back. You know, those aren't excuses, but you know, this is just reality and facts. But you know, we just it's tough. But for me, I feel the same way as coach. Like I'm confident in our guys. I'm confident in myself. I'm confident in everybody to be able to come together and and rally these wins together. Like Garrison said last game we can't have the mentality that we're three and 11. You know, we feel like we're better than that. We know we're better than that. So it's, you know, we just got to go out and do it. Neil. Hey, Brad, a, a little bit of a non game question. I was rereading the Players Tribune article you had written in 2017 about the relationship you had with your mom. Obviously she's very close with how you're brought up. I'm curious, is that relationship still the same where she's texting you all the time, even right now, and giving you adver or thoughts to how to get through this adversity? And how has that relationship continued to grow in your NBA career? Well, I, I would say it's a lot different now. I have I have two boys, two boys. So my mom, 
she kind of respects my adulthood and kind of lets me grow a little, a little bit more now. Uh, but she's always going to be the toughest coach I've ever had. I always say that. Like, still to this day, she's, she's going to be in my ear and tell me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and, you know, make sure I'm correcting it. But, uh, I'm not – I wouldn't say I'm necessarily in, like, a mental funk or anything or whatever it is you're trying to necessarily get at. Like, it's, a, it's an adverse time. Like, we all know how to deal with it. Uh, you know, you know, it defines your character and to see your retaliation in in times of adversity. So uh, that's all this is. What, what was going on with you and Rondo? I know you guys have the double text and then you had the second one with him as well. Oh, uh, shit. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's more on me. Um, I cannot allow myself just to stoop down to anybody level. Uh, you know, that's just not my character, who I am. Uh, so I gotta be better regardless of what trash talking, what things are said. Um, it's on me to control myself. Um, I control my own emotions. So I'm, I take full responsibility for, for, you know, all of that. Um, although I don't agree with the second tech, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been in that situation if I never would have stooped down to the, to the level um, of anybody else and allowed them to be able to get me to a place where uh, I get a tech or another tech, uh, but I know how to control my own emotions and play, uh, with the proper emotions and, and make sure it's pointed at the right direction, not towards anybody else, but in a positive way. So um, that's on me, nothing that nobody else is doing, easy fix for me, uh, but I definitely uh, have to be better uh, and do better. And I know I will, cause it's an easy fix for me because it's something that I can do personally. Brad, you're good, you're done? Ava? Russ, you obviously uh, weren't the only player who got tossed tonight. What's the team's mentality in general after this game? Um, you know, we got to compete. That's the biggest thing. I think when you start the game, you got to be able to compete. Uh, you know, we've struggled with having players and guys and getting a rhythm, but nobody cares. Nobody feels sorry for us. Uh, you know, that shows by the amount of things and things that t other teams are doing um, to us. And we got to make sure we're ready to go. Um, and we know coming up next is going to be even tougher. So we got to make sure we're mentally and physically ready to go. And uh, hopefully we can get guys into a better rhythm, get their win back, um, because it's all the process. And then you obviously, it looked like you were able to get to the rim easier. We're feeling better tonight. What part of your game came or felt a little better for you tonight? Um, I just feel better my body, uh, you know, my leg and everything's feeling better. So I'm, I would be fine, um, like I mentioned before. Um, but, you know, you got to put some wins together. That's the number one thing, most important thing right now is trying to win. Chase? Russ, what, what have these last four games been like? You guys have had your four lowest scoring games of the season and then you know you get a wave of players back it's just I would imagine it's a bit bit of an unusual stretch of games for you guys four games uh, I mean obviously I mean it's different you know you gotta figure out who's on the court and how guys can implement and make an impact to the game so obviously scoring and different players are going to be adjusted uh, with that um, there's so many different variables but like I said before, man, nobody really gives a damn about any of those variables. It doesn't really matter. So honestly, I don't even like keep talking about it because it's really pointless because um, nobody cares. When you lose, you lose. No matter if you got six players, eight players, good players, bad players, it don't really matter. Um, what matters is we go out and compete um, and that's all we can worry about. So um, I'm not gonna keep harping on uh, COVID and this shit and that. Um, I'm not going to ask you any more questions about that anymore. Just heads up to you guys here. But uh, we can move forward. We got to figure it out. Uh, I need to figure out a better way to be able to meet these guys. I'm doing a shitty job of it right now. Um, and I got to do a better job. So I need to go back and reevaluate the things that I'm doing to be able to help other guys on our team. And um, I make sure that we put ourselves in position uh, to get better as the season prolongs. And, um, Coach Brooks said uh, a lot of different reasons why he thinks 
you know, three and 12, despite that, he's confident. He said, you guys will turn this around. Uh, what gives you confidence that you guys can turn this around? Uh, just an, I know a group of guys in the locker room, they compete. Um, and they're known for competing, they're playing hard, and we're just not playing ourselves right now. Um, we know that internally. That's the, the best part about this league is that you can get a chance to play another game um, in a day or so um, and get a chance to redeem yourself. So and it's a long year. You know, it's uh, no matter how you start, um, you know, obviously, we want to continue and improve as the season prolongs, and uh, we're going to do that. Matthew? Hey, Russ. Uh, Scott was saying about just how important the continuity will be to have all those games in February. Just I wanted to get it from your perspective. Just how, how do you think that stretch where you guys have 16 games in February will be to help uh, turning this thing around? Um, well, you know, for one, um, I think, you know, bunching all those games together for us is pretty crazy, if you may ask me. Um, just health-wise for the players, I know COVID and the whole, uh, the league trying to find ways to better implement games, but um, I do think the health of the players is very, very important, and we definitely um, need to keep our eye on that. Um, because, yes, we love to play, but, you know, playing five games and seven nights and doing it again the next week is a, it can be difficult man um, mentally and obviously physically um, but besides that um, it would be good for us to be able to create some rhythm or try to at least uh, you know we don't have much practice time but just traveling and being around each other um, it's tough to do team events team out is we can't go to team dinner um, so it just it's, it's different man so we got to find ways to be able to create continuity with each other can't really hang out and create a uh, you know, a team type of vibe to be able to create some continuity off the floor. So um, it's a challenge, uh, especially from my perspective and still trying to find ways around it. Yeah. Have you had to adjust your leadership style at all or anything like that? With <laughs> no, definitely, man. It's, um, you know, I'm used to hosting dinners and taking guys out and keeping guys together on the road and doing things together. I think that's when you the best. When you, as a team, you do everything together. Um, and I honestly believe in that. Uh, but obviously now it's tough to do and obviously for more important cause and it's important that we don't, you know, obviously do everything together by not passing the virus and our, for our health and safety reasons. But on the basketball side, our leadership side is definitely different. Uh, something that, gotta, that you got to adjust to. Yeah. 